As we first told you last Friday, a new trial's been requested for Leo Ackley. He's the man convicted of killing his girlfriend's daughter. It was in August of 2011, a pediatrician noted in a CPS report that three-year-old Bailey Stenman had non-accidental head trauma, also known as shaken baby syndrome. But an amended version of the same petition took out that term, shaken baby syndrome. The same doctor stated the injury could not have been from a fall or a seizure. But Ackley's new lawyer says that the previous defense did not include an expert witness who would have countered that claim. Since so much of this new decision is based around shaken baby syndrome and that diagnosis, we wanted to get more information on that condition. For that, we're joined live now in studio with Dr. Jason Umfleet, pediatric neurologist at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital. Doctor, thanks for coming in tonight. My pleasure. Is this an airtight diagnosis for shaken baby syndrome, or is there some conjecture involved? Well, the diagnosis of ba shaken baby syndrome has been around for quite a long period of time. Um, recently, there have been some concerns that possibly there's not enough force involved in shaking a baby to potentially cause the injuries that we see in shaking baby. However, the general consensus in the medical community is it's still a real diagnosis and children really do have injuries from being shook. Could injuries from a fall mimic uh, the injuries that you would see from SBS? Well, it's fun. Go very, very unlikely that's going to happen, actually. Um, when you look at falls in general, um, deaths and serious injuries from falls, from short falls um, uh, specifically, are very uncommon, actually. Would this change in, I guess, the approach of the diagnosis for shaken baby syndrome be enough to go back and reverse past diagnoses? Well, that would that that that'd be a whole nother legal question. Uh, obviously, if um, uh, there was some sort of incontrovertible proof that shaken baby syndrome can't happen as the way we've thought it is, then you would have to go back. But um, like I said, the most of the most of the um, Confu not confusion, but most of the uh, concern about um, shaking baby syndrome might not, not being a necessarily true diagnosis is a fairly small minority of, of people. When we talk about shaken baby syndrome, are we talking about a, a, an age range for children involved? Do you, do you hit a peak, I guess? Yeah, there's a tip. Typically, it's going to be in the first year of life, but it definitely can happen after that. Um, you know, there uh, it can happen in young uh, toddlers. Um, there's even a well-known case of an adult man who um, had a shaken baby. Um, basically, uh, brain injuries that brain, would be associated brain injuries, like that, etc. Yes. But bottom line, the, the physicians are going from their collection of knowledge. They're looking at what uh, the injuries are, mm -hmm. and then they're making a diagnosis. Is it based on the evidence involved? Is it based on their gut feeling of what might have happened, or a little bit of both? Um, it is uh, should be always based on the evidence that is at hand. Um, that includes both the history, the physical exam findings, um, findings found on CT scans of the head, x-rays, as well as, you know, um, what um, people who are involved in the care who could have potentially been perpetrators say about what happened. So they're making an assessment based on all of that. Yes. And what you're saying too, shaken baby syndrome, as far as the diagnosis goes, the majority of physicians out there still rely on uh, this. And, and still counted as. Absolutely, that's still a solid diagnosis, yes. Interesting. Yep. Dr. Jason Umfleet uh, with a pediatric neurologist with Helen DeVos Children's Hospital. Doctor, thanks for coming in tonight. My pleasure, thank you.